is James Bird, and I'm here to talk about web accessibility. So you can think of the web a lot like you can think of a public library. It's a giant store of information available to everyone that people from all over can go to. However, do you see a problem in this image? If you can't get upstairs, you're probably going to have a little bit of trouble getting into the library, unless you have an odd access ramp. Web accessibility is basically building access ramps to the web and making sure that everyone can access everything in the web equally and on the same level. So here's an example. This code more or less, you know, looks fine. You know, it's not great code. It's kind of a crappy website probably, but nonetheless, it works. However, there are some problems that are not immediately apparent from just looking at the code. So here, I'm going to open up the web page and we'll see the problem. See, not only is this ugly, there's also the fact that if you have red-green red, color blindness, you're probably going to have a lot of trouble reading any of the actual text because it's green on red. This is probably not immediately apparent to most people, and it doesn't even affect most people, but it's still there. And you want your website to be, accessed, to be able to be accessed by every person. You know, Every person who can't access your website because of a disability is lost business, in addition to just being unfair to that person. So to combat this, the World Wide Web Consortium, which is more or less the governing body of the web, or as close as can be to one, created the Web Accessibility Initiative, which sought to create Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, or WCAG. Currently, they have published um, WCAG 2.0 in 2008, and that's pretty much the wide, most widely accepted standard for web accessibility standards. Pretty much every country goes by some variant of this or just uses WCAG2. So what does that consist of? Well, there are four main principles. Information should be perceivable, which basically means that everyone should be able to perceive the information. You shouldn't have any information that's hidden to a particular class of users. For example, um, if you are deaf, you should have transcripts that you can read for audio podcasts, because otherwise that information would be completely hidden. Information and the website needs to be operable, which means you need to be able to ex access all of the website, regardless of disabilities. So for example, you wouldn't want, for example, a button that can only be activated by clicking on it and not by any sort of keyboard commands. Because then if you can't use a mouse due to, for example, a motor disability, you're not going to be able to access that button. And you have understandable. This one is a little bit more vague, a little bit more straightforward. Basically, all information needs to be able to be understood by the user. Your website should be predictable. It shouldn't do just like weird, like unexplained things. This is also just good website design, besides being helpful to some people with disabilities. And then lastly, your website needs to be robust, which basically just means, you know, for unpredictable use cases, for things you haven't tested, you know, for different weird specs, like on mobile, on a big screen, on all that type of stuff, your website should still operate more or less the same and still be accessible to everyone. So there are 12 general guidelines for implementing these principles, which have 61 testable criteria. And there are three levels of conformance, A, AA, and AAA. So at this point, you're probably like feeling a little bit like Cody here. <laughs> because yeah, it's very complex. And in making a site completely web accessible and implementing it as AAA, which is the highest level, is very difficult and it takes a long time. The point is, you shouldn't worry about that too much. You should mostly focus on, when you're building a website, think about the type of things that could make life easier for disabled people. Think about implementing alternatives. So if you have a function that really just can't be implemented in a way that's accessible, provide an alternative to get the same information. It doesn't have to be on the main site as long as you can get to it from the main site. And even a lot of like professional websites and even a lot of governments only require single A or double A levels of conformance. Triple A is very, very much an ideal more so than a practical thing for large websites. So to think about what kind of disabilities you should be targeting, here are some general categories. You have people with visual disabilities, for example, the blind, colorblind, things like that, people who can't read very well. So for these types of things, you need to think about how you use color a lot. You shouldn't, use, you shouldn't have contrast between text and background that makes it difficult to see. You should make sure all your websites are capable of being used by screen readers which are basically just things that are operated by the keyboard and just read out the contents of the thing. So for example, a classic example of this is an image tag. You need to have an alt tag in your images 
because otherwise people with slow internet or people using screen readers are not going to get any information from that. It's just going to be this mystical thing that no one can look at. You have people with audio disabilities. So for example, deafness, hard of hearing. And so these are the aforementioned transcripts come in a lot of handy. You want to have subtitles for videos, transcripts for podcasts, etc. Motor disabilities. So for example, things that make it difficult to use a mouse or even things that make it difficult to use a keyboard. This is why you want to have your website be completely accessible solely from the keyboard so that people not, who can't use a mouse can still use it completely. And then cognitive. This one's a little bit harder to quantify specifically, but basically just make your information able to be accessed by people with learning disabilities, you know, even like younger children also, like people who aren't necessarily going to be able to like read and understand like a long block of text or whatever. So we're going to go over another example. I've built my own private website and I'm really proud of it. So, you know, I'm going to show it to you guys. Are you ready? Oh, oh that doesn't look very good. Huh. All right. So I thought this website was going to be great, but clearly there's a lot of web accessibility issues. Like the contrast is terrible. This might trigger people with epilepsy. I don't even know what this is. Let's look at the actual document to see if we can clean some of this up. So the first thing you should do when you're fixing a website to make it more web accessible is the biggest problem with this code is it's really hard to read because I didn't implement a style sheet. I just have all this code inside style tag. I have some inline styling. And then my script tag, instead of putting it in a separate JavaScript pile, I've just put a actual script right here. So the first thing you should do is refactor those and take all those out and move them to a separate file. So the difference between this, which is just this long, unreadable thing, and then this, which is just the HTML itself, is huge. And it makes it much easier to change things. So like, for example, you'll notice I've implemented everything with classes. I have a script file, and I have a style sheet somewhere else. Don't panic also. It's a very daunting task, especially when you're using a, some sort of editor that will give you all these errors for like, this is not accessible, this is not accessible, this is, you're doing this wrong. Don't panic. Don't worry about making everything perfect immediately because it's not going to be. It's very difficult to make a website completely web accessible. That's why it's taken so long for the W3C to implement the WCAG. Separate your HTML from your CSS and your JavaScript. And consider providing alternatives. Sometimes it's a lot easier, instead of just completely changing your main site, to just provide a link there that says, you know, for people with this disability, consider using this other resource. And then you can just provide it very simply without having to change your main website. And then if anyone is interested, you can read about the WCAG guidelines in gritty detail at this website. Thank you.